After giving a midterm exam, one of my best students came to my office hours, very mad, very upset, and told me, this is completely unfair. I was shocked because I knew this student and I was wondering, how did I make him so upset? I was very surprised. I mean, I don't design exams intentionally to face students. Some faculty intend to do that, right? Oh, my average is very low. I am a very good professor. I would never do that. I really, really want to be fair. The students felt I was mistreating them because I gave questions they didn't expect and I didn't prepare for. The midterm was in a graduate artificial intelligence course. In AI, for a program to be able to decide what actions to do, the program needs an initial description of the state of the world and the goal, and also needs a description of the actions that can be done and how each action changes the world. For instance, if I want to move a book from the table to the chair, in the initial state, the book is on the table. In the goal state, the book is on the chair. The actions need to consider all possible cases. If there is nothing on top of the book, my hand is free, I can grasp the book. But when the book is grasped, it's no longer on the table, it is in my hand. All these details have to be written down in a formal logic format so that the program can figure out the sequence of actions needed to reach the goal. Once you know how to write this description, it's not too difficult. But if you have never tried to write down one on your own, you'll find it difficult to remember all the conditions and actions and how to put them together. I now know why the students complain about my exam. So I spend more time making sure they work through the examples of everything I cover in class. When teaching, I always remember the students need to practice. The best way to practice is to do in class. In my undergraduate classes some years ago, I started to give pop quizzes to encourage students to attend class. This worked for the students, but I was spending a lot of time grading those quizzes. You know, grading is to be fair. So I needed to make a grading rubric and be consistent. It was too much work. So I changed the model. Now the students get points for being in class, no matter what they do. I let them work with each other. In fact, I encourage them to work with each other. And because they can discuss with others, they understand issues much better. Since it doesn't take much time for me to mark their mistakes, they get feedback very quickly. In addition, I see what the students did wrong, and that helps me decide what I should go over in class next time to make sure everybody understands. It's a win-win situation. This has worked well even with graduate students. They also practice in class. When you try to solve a specific problem, you have to see what other knowledge is to be used, how to put it all together. And you have to justify why you do this or that and not that. Finding connections between different things takes time and lots of practice. Computers need to be told precisely what to do. And while we might think the same thing about students, and we spend a lot of time lecturing, telling them what to do, what their students really need is practice. Practice and feedback in getting the details right and putting the pieces together properly.